in this video we are going to sit down and look at some of the controversial horse topics that are kind of trendy right now. You guys asked us these on Instagram and we are here to give you our honest opinions. So what we did was we sat in a room and separately recorded these. We have them all written on this piece of paper and we did a super short answer. So then you can kind of see side by side comparisons. We don't know right now how each of us answered it. So we're just gonna watch the footage back. If we had differences on things or if we wanna elaborate, um, we're gonna talk about them. And I think there's like six or seven key ones that we wanna look at. I think there needs to be a proper balance of both. I mostly use negative reinforcement. Positive reinforcement can be helpful in certain situations. I think chains on halters should only be used when there is a huge concern for safety. They are not for training. Only in very extreme situations. Most of the time your horse needs more groundwork. I think it's ethical if the horses are enjoying doing it and are doing it with little resistance. As long as they are adequately taken care of and not pushed past their limits. Yes, absolutely. I don't see why they shouldn't be. Yeah, absolutely. More money for people in the horse industry. I don't believe in the stereotype. I've had more nice chestnut mares than not nice chestnut mares. I think there's other ways to handle that reaction. There have to be consequences to actions. By consequences, okay, this is a hard one to respond to in five seconds. I don't mean smacking. I just mean there's got to be, what's the bad word to use? You can't come out your horse with like, we, we were saying you can't like just ignore it. And whatever, you can't reinforce it positively. Yeah, and whatever redirection is necessary to get that horse out of your bubble is what's necessary. Right, so like a proper thing for your horse biting, maybe sending them away or backing them up or some lighter correction rather than just like, <laughs> smacking your horse. Because a lot of the times horse bites. Here, I'm gonna be the horse and bite Sam. And then if you just smack it, go ahead and smack my hand. The horse is just like there still. Right. And it hasn't gotten like the redirection that it needs. Whereas if I bite Sam and she <laughs> oh! <laughs> This is so bad. How do I explain it? So like, instead if she does if she does a lot of times the horse gets a smack and then just like the feet don't move, they stay right there and then they're just like, oh, okay, that's all that happened. Like right. when really the horse needs to be like moved, right. sent away, like redirected. Basically smacking is not an effective way to train your horse or correct your horse. It's better to more think about isolating the body parts, doing something to get their energy moving a different way. Um, redirect. Are redirect. That's the, that's the word I wish you would use. Redirect. Yes. I can't see any way that flood training would be good. It doesn't really hold up, but also what some people call flooding isn't really flooding. Yeah, okay, so flood training bad, but a lot of people see flood training bad. <laughs> flood, training. Flood, flood training bad. Obviously no one should be training with flooding methods because they right. don't work. It's just overwhelming the horse and it's almost putting them into a freeze state. That's why we always talk about relaxation and looking for those signs to make sure your horse is kind of like graduated that step to go to the next. Right, but the problem I have with the phrase flood training or flooding is a lot of people use it when they just don't like what they see and it's not actually flooding that they're describing. Right, or if the horse reacts in like a super large way, like not necessarily a negative way, but like say you're showing them a saddle pad for the first time. You've already prepped them by like desensitizing with a whip and moving your arms. Um, you show them a saddle pad and they like jump out to the side and then you have to keep moving the saddle pad otherwise right. they're just gonna learn that you know they jump to the side then you take the pad away and you're like no it's okay princess bubbles you're fine they some people think that's flood training because instead of taking the pad away you keep it with them and kind of follow along until the horse relaxes and then you remove it um i think that would be yeah, one instance where right and a lot of people see like working with a flag there's a way to desensitize using a flag that uses pressure and release and stays within underneath horse's fear thresholds. And then there's a way to do it like where you tie a flag to a tail and make them run around right. until they <laughs> don't want to run anymore. And that would obviously be flooding. And right. a lot of people call things flooding that aren't flooding. Or if you're tacking your horse up and they're bronking and then finally you get them to stop, but obviously they're very tense. You're like, let's slap some pool noodles on them, send them back out, tie some buckets to the side. 
obviously they're not even okay with like the saddle for me that would be an indicator to either go back to the cinch or work on like just a sur single or work on relaxation with the saddle call it quits for the day and then keep working on that until each session gets better then introduce pool, no pool noodles don't do it all pool noodle. pool noodles. don't do it all <laughs> at once <laughs> using ropes to teach a horse to pick up their feet is a really good idea oh awesome we do this all the time I believe there's good parts to everyone's method and there's some parts that can be discarded or only used in certain situations. He's kind of a jerk, but he also trains the same way on camera as he does off camera, which not a lot of people in his position do, so I respect that. I want to add something here. Um, obviously some of the things he does I don't condone at all. Um, the benefit, I've watched some of his like fundamental training videos. He's actually really, really good at explaining basic concepts and I think that's why he's as popular as he is because he lays things out really methodically and really step by step and I think that's why he's as popular as he is. Right, well and he did like a mastermind job developing his business, like being able to communicate and break things down to the non-horse person wanting to be a horse person. Like just being able to do that is a talent that I think he was probably one of the first to yeah. actually create like the online video library in a step by step because not everyone understands the whole entire, you know, train by reading each horse and adjusting each horse. Like that takes a lot of time, practice and feel. And it's not that not everyone has the mindset. Some people just aren't capable and they literally need the step by step. So I think he was really smart in developing a program like that. Yeah because I don't believe R plus keeps stress signals lower in the long run. Horses have to learn how to deal with stressful situations. That's just a part of general safety. I'm not really sure what this question meant. Horses need to learn pressure and release because when you get them into a situation, if you want to perform with them, if you want to show them, if you want to take them to your vet's office to get and their And not bodies, have them kill your vet. Right. You need to expose them to things and you can't always prep them for situations with just positive reinforcement. I think there needs to be a balance. Now I'm not saying disregard all positive reinforcement. I think it's really useful for horses that are stuck and need help kind of um, get engaging and I don't know, making breakthroughs in like specific small areas, but I don't think any horse should be trained strictly with positive reinforcement. Uh, I think another good thing to keep in mind is that predator animals and prey animals are very different in that um, dogs, for example, um, they value food above safety and comfort, whereas horses value safety and comfort above food. So um, using other methods to provide safety and comfort as a reward um, rather than food as a reward are going to be stronger and faster than using food as a reward in certain situations. Also if you think about how horses interact with each other in a paddock it's not with positive reinforcement it's with negative reinforcement. I like to sit on my horses when they're about two and a half or three and do light work until they are probably about four and then it gets a little bit heavier. Three or older. The age to start horses, I would say, yeah, my warm blood program, usually I sit on them when they're about two and a half and they get light work when they're about three and they go through their 90 day cold starting at their, the age of three. Now, am I pushing them to try to show them? No. Am I working on flying lead changes? No. Am I working on sliding stops or like really tight fast pivots? No. It is a very basic 90 day colt start. They get ridden for 10 to 15 minutes a day or worked for 10 to 15 minutes a day. Normally it's not even ridden in the first couple times. So um, I do agree with the younger age and there's a lot of studies on the fact that work can really help with bone density later on. Now working your horse till they're sweating to death every single time or they're super exhausted or they're getting fatigued. No, that's not gonna be great for any young developing growing horse, but I do believe a little bit of work is good for their bone development. Yeah. And I kind of gave like the short blanket answer, but like Sam said, it's um, very much more complicated when you get into it. Um, every individual horse is gonna be different and every breed is gonna be different. So the best thing that you can do if you're deciding what to do with your personal horse is to consult your vet. It's situational where nerving a horse for a navicular would be ethical, but overall I'm going to say no. I don't have enough <laughs> ex 
expertise on this topic. I am not a vet. I still don't have a good answer. I don't know. Is nerve blocking ethical for, what was it, a navicular? Navicular horse. To keep them pasture sound and comfortable, yes. If you're blocking their nerve to keep them as a performance horse, no. That sounds good to me. I still haven't fully formed an opinion on racing yet. I think for the most part though, it can be okay. Uh, there's a lot of room for improvement in that industry, but as a whole, I don't think the idea is bad. I think you're totally right that there is a lot of room for improvement in it. And I think I would have to study a lot more on it to form a valid opinion and read more studies and stuff. But sometimes in my head, I'm like, wow, that is a lot to push them to do at that age. They could wait till they're older. But at the same time, I think the treatment of them when they're in the facilities is pretty top notch. I've been to a few of the facilities and like TaylorMade Farm is a really, really big horse racing breeding facility. I don't, I can't remember exactly what they do. I worked with mainly the yearlings when I was there and they were all really well taken care of. Like I said, I think there's a lot of room for improvement and um, I think there is in every sport, but you've got to remember that these horses are incredibly valuable. The thoroughbred industry makes up the largest portion of the horse industry, which is a huge billion dollar industry. People tend to see one negative and just run with it. picture yeah. or one negative story and just use that as a generalization for an entire industry. Right. Like I worry about the horse industry as a whole if racing was completely like cut off. Here's, here's what I do want to point out is that if changes that need to be made and this goes for any sport if changes that need to be made aren't made by the people in the horse industry if we push these things under the rug and don't take care of them ourselves those changes will be taken out of our hand and that will be negative for the entire horse industry it comes to the point where PETA or whatever organization it's gonna not is great. taking control and making decisions for the thoroughbred industry, well, they're going to start having control over horse showing, show jumping, um, dressage, every single discipline is gonna suffer if changes aren't made by um, the racing industry itself. Yeah, by the people within the industry. Those, those decisions will get taken out of our hands. I think spurs are great. Spurs are not for go, therefore teaching specific cues. I don't think R plus establishes the human as a leader, but I also don't think that is the goal when working with horses. If you do it right, positive reinforcement can be very helpful, and as long as your horse is more focused on you than the treat, then yes. That's the big thing about positive reinforcement is when it's mishandled, the horse is only focused on the reward and not on you. But like same thing as Sam, I don't think the idea is to make the horse a leader. To um, make the human a leader. Or make the human a leader. Um, I don't think that's that's the idea there. Um, no, I don't think either of us use dominance, dominance based training and I think it's pretty outdated and honestly I don't think that many people use it anymore. Like I don't think it's some barbaric thing that people need to be attacking others for. I don't think no, that many No, I think that's that. another thing that like people see desensitizing with the flag and they think it's all flooding. People see um, po or pressure and release and think it's all dominance. And that's just not true. That's just the extreme end of that spectrum. Um, same as there's an extreme end of the positive reinforcement right. side that we've already talked about where um, they think all pressure is bad. I don't agree with breeding Mustangs. No, um, I don't condone breeding Mustangs. I haven't ever really heard a good reason to breed a Mustang. There is one good reason, embryo transfer. So oh, yeah, yeah. if horses are, for those of you that don't know what embryo transfer are, it's basically take a Grand Prix horse. You don't want it to have six months off or whatever between you know the last few dates it's pregnant, the last few months it's pregnant, and the first few months it has the foal. It needs to stay in work, keep up, be in shape, and go to shows and whatever. Do its job. So basically the embryo transfer is they breed that mare and then transfer it over to a recipient mare and uh, 
Mustangs could be used for that potentially. The bigger, stockier ones are more likely than not. Same in the quarter horse world, the Mustangs would be fine for that. And basically, they're just carrying another foal, and that's their job. It's pretty easy, honestly. And they'd be really well taken care of. Yeah. Cause... So that's probably the only time that breeding Mustangs would be a good thing. But even then, it's not breeding Mustangs because it's right. not passing on the genes of Mustangs. Correct. Um, I think that the management system of them is pretty good because they even release some that are like have better qualities back into the herds yeah, when they yeah. do roundups. BLM regularly genetically tests Mustangs and releases um, the best stock back and I think that the the cool unique thing about owning a Mustang is that it's not bred by people so I don't think I'd want to own a Mustang that was bred by people. Right. I do agree with hobble training. Hobble training is great for teaching horses to remain safe in sticky situations. I think if you can, turnout for a horse would be ideal over stalling. Turnout is always better than stalling unless your horse has a special need or injury. I don't believe in forced headsets, but I do believe in educating people on the difference between disciplined headsets. Collection always starts in the hind end and ends in the front end. Too many people get that backwards. And I do agree with that statement. Yes! Love the horse first and the sport second. Yeah, I think those were the majority of them. And I'm, a lot of our answers were parallel, so there's not too much to discuss there. And I feel I like the only thing we disagreed on was the smacking the a horse for fighting, which I don't, I don't mean just smack it and then be done with it. And Camille we already covered just that. just set up for failure. I was yelling at her. I was like, answer it fast. She's like, yeah. <laughs> Smack them. <laughs> if you guys have any more, maybe we'll do a video in the future. So if you want to comment those controversial horse topics or general topics below, we'll do our best to answer them. Subscribe to our channel. Woo! Woo! I tried to do one of those cool oh YouTuber God. outro. I think your battery's low. Oh God. Do a dance. Leave I'm the screen. I'm pretty sure for like the last three or four minutes of that video, I've been making a sandwich. Well, you're still in the screen. I'm still in the screen. Just get out of the screen. Sam, I don't know how to answer this in five seconds. Can I say a hole? Did you what? Can I say a hole? A hole? A hole? A hole? Yeah. A like not say oh. asshole, but say a hole. Why don't you just say a different word? Okay, hobble training is really helpful. Good, awesome. I'm so bad at this, Sam. Do you get shorter when you're pregnant? I think we had differences on things, or we want to elaborate. Elaborate? Elaborate. Recording? <laughs> yeah. Okay, Camille, where's my... Camille, you can't say these things. <laughs> what? Where's my uh, saw? Super soup. In the... Where is my super soup? In the feed room. All right, where's your drill? I don't know what we're talking we about. Just restart it after Connor leaves. He can be in the back. It's fine. Okay. By consequences, I didn't mean smacking. Um, I mean that was a good one. And yeah, I think there are better ways to handle it. Of course, if you're like for some reason in a life or death situation with whatever horse you're, are you crawling? Oh my god. <laughs> for whatever. You're not out of the <laughs> huh? You're not out of the frame. Dang. It has to be like a prior follow through, like maybe like backing up, a less a prior follow. -through? There needs to be a lead up cue. Are you um, live or are you all recording? We're yeah, recording. we're live. Like Camille said, did we even get to your part? Should we just restart that thing? <laughs> Direct her head. A lot of times the horse gets a smack. Anything else? It's kind of like a oh. situation. Oh. <laughs> Not I think we're diving it. into a I'm, rabbit hole now. I'm, I'm bleeping that out.